Welcome to our third day of budget deliberations here in Leduc County. Um, just for all of those who are viewing today, just to let you know that our budget process is an iterative process. Council has had an opportunity to look at many of the parts of our budget during committee meetings or workshop meetings. And so we're well versed with what those are. We do have, um, take the amount of time we need to ask and answer the questions and work through that. And with that, at the beginning of every budget day, uh, administration brings back responses to the questions that uh, were posed but not answered on the previous day or days. And so with that, I will turn this over to Ms. Klamosko <clears throat> to start with the review and then move into enforcement services. So whenever you're ready, Ms. Klamosko, thank you. Good morning, Mayor and Council. So the items that have some questions associated with them are all the projects that have been placed on the adjustment summary. So I would like to answer those specific questions when we do the agenda item for the review of the adjustment summary at later this morning. So I don't have any other updates other than those to provide this morning. Okay, thank you. So then we will move into enforcement services and we'll ask Mr. Nelson to come forward and <clears throat> I'll do a little bit of Ms. Weiss's job and say tab 50 really quickly. And whenever you're ready to start, Mr. Nelson. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me this morning. I wanted to talk a little bit about our 2022 operational plan. You see before you uh, section 1.2, the uh, service areas. No particular order, they're broken down to the following. That includes the leadership and administration, bylaw and animal control, enhanced policing, regional training, and traffic safety. Those uh, components of our, those are the, the backbone of our department and uh, form the primary things that we do each year. Uh, also refer to the organizational chart that is uh, current as of today, including uh, myself and the administrative assistant, our peace officers, our senior peace officer and our bylaw enforcement officer. Do you have any questions about those? I have a question about the delineation between a senior peace officer and just a peace officer. And I'm assuming that's not an age thing. Well, <laughs> you are correct, uh, but also it, uh, yes, um, so senior peace officer is the person that is uh, sort of my backup in, okay. in my absence, and uh, he's the most experienced person there as well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, moving on to strategy two. Um, no, uh, sorry, strategy three. Let's move to that. Uh, action plans and uh, referring to those three components that talk about uh, the protection of infrastructure, and uh, to educate road users through traffic safety and enforcement. This is where we focus primarily on the conducting of uh, traffic operations per year. And we do, we, we do we're, our target is about 700 in a given year. Our target for uh, patrols in banned roads is about 1200 annually. And our target for minimum number of traffic stops regarding our new, uh, and I shouldn't say new, it's a couple of years old now, our cargo securement uh, program, at least 100, of those stops and those are primarily during those peak years or I should say peak times during the summer. Questions? <clears throat> I, have a, I have a question. Uh, when you have your deliverables, will those be what you're reporting on when we look at quarterly reports? So that's the first question. The second question, and I appreciated the clarity around the uh, cargo securement, but uh, the other two um, traffic operations are those throughout the year or with the band roads I would assume maybe more in the spring just a little bit more detail on that so first question is are those the KPIs you're going to report on and secondly are the other two seasonal uh, and if so what would be those seasons thank you yes uh, madam chair the the first one with the KPIs key performance indicators they're marrying up with the community and peace officer performance plan that we do report to uh, both this council four times a year and also the Community Protective Services, uh, I should say, uh, Protective Services Committee. Yep. Uh, so they are one and the same. 
Um, and with reference to when the other two happened, that's the uh, dedicated traffic patrols and the uh, band roads. Well, let me say this, that anytime we stop and spend time for 20 minutes or more in any part of the Leduc County, we're counting that. So that's year round. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other one, uh, band roads, obviously we're a little bit busier when bands are on, but uh, there's still year round bands as well. Thank you. Seeing no other hands up, move on to strategy 1.2, please. That's responding to concerns uh, and, and hotspots in general. Uh, the, the information we get to form those hotspot lists comes from a couple sources. That's the community, uh, sorry, the traffic advisory committee, uh, the general public and uh, our officers observations. So our target is uh, not necessarily specified, uh, but we try to get at least 2000 patrols in those areas of hotspots. And that, that can be uh, a longer or shorter list depending on any time of year and it is year round so and uh just to clarify then if i'm a a resident i can phone in and say i think this is happening there is a process for that information to get to you and that's what this refers to exactly any further questions i i'm just full of questions today um one of the things i know that we had talked about in protective services when I was on that a number of years ago was our school zones. So where do the school zone patrols and or because now we have we're back to two schools in in the county. Um, where do those fit in and, and or should they be specifically mentioned? Thank you. I, Madam Chair, I wouldn't call those a hotspot. I would call those a, a routine patrol. Okay in that area. So uh, I could actually pull those stats up when we spending time in those two school zones, uh, but those are a given. And of course those happen during the school year. So again, because it's something that's happening routinely, it's not part of your action plan because these are new initiatives. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Vandenberg. I would assume New Humble would be, it is an operating school. You are correct. It's been replaced by another school. It's a charter school, no? We have authority on that road, 795 south of Calmar. Yeah. It's not a school board thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, continue on, I'm seeing no more hands. Moving on to uh, strategy 1.3 on the next page. Um, we participate in special events throughout the year and obviously uh, last year was uh, a little bit slow. This year, we, it was a little bit picking up. Um, the last one that we were at was the Santa Claus Parade. And we don't put a specific number on that. We just want to make sure we're represented there. Goal number two, and specifically uh, 2.1, responding to emergency and public safety concerns. So we uh, obviously are part of that uh, public safety model when it comes to responding to traffic issues and uh, scene security and safety during collisions. Uh, also other events that involve the police, fire and EMS. So we assist them uh, in those capacities when they call upon us. And uh, we don't put specific stats on that, but we do report that to the same committees we spoke about just now. Questions? No, nope. continue on. 2.2 .2 refers to a collaborate, collaborating with uh, regional and professional development opportunities. So we, uh, we generally provide the weights and dimensions course instruction for all officers in Alberta. And we uh, provide some instruction on radar. And uh, we also provide other um, opportunities for instructions um, and enhanced policing service levels when it comes to budget preparation. A uh, question from me, uh, Councillor Lewis. Thank you. Uh, those are all fee for service, is that correct? Correct, yes. Uh, this is a, a paid uh, program that people pay us, yeah. Okay, thank you. 3.1. 3.1 is the uh, development and, uh, and maintenance of uh, public relations uh, through awareness programs. And so we, we do that through uh, participating in the open houses and school presentations uh, in conjunction with our school resource officer as well. We, we work with that person. And um, we have the uh, community and peace officer performance plan as mentioned as well and uh, making amendments to those. We look forward to, I guess, making those amendments usually in the first quarter of the year after the well-established uh, new Protective Services Committee members have been uh, appointed to their positions. Questions? Continue on. 
and uh, of course promoting the public safety on other areas of the county and that is uh, the water bodies and off highway lands. So we have a, a program that allows us to do both. We set some goals uh, each year and um, we try to meet those performance indicators. And uh, it's a very well received program regardless of the number of times we get out there. Uh, the, uh, the public appreciates our presence both on uh, those off highway vehicle locations which have risen to some degree during COVID and uh, bodies of water here in the Duke County. Questions, Councillor Vandenberg, Councillor Belazer. Yeah. <coughs> Promoting awareness operations does that include and the and the uh, uh, the off uh, highway safety. Does that include Coal Lake? Uh, we haven't actively been at Coal Lake on the water there, uh, but we do uh, work in conjunction with uh, the people that do priority or do their patrols there, and that is uh, the Fish and Wildlife officers. So we're primarily on land in that area for off-highway vehicles. Does that make sense? Okay, but you're on the water in other water bodies. Yeah, the busier ones would be Wizard Lake, Pigeon Lake area. Uh, Coal Lake's getting pretty busy. I don't, know, I don't understand why you're not active there. I would, I'm not saying we're not active. I'm just saying the busier ones are the other ones. Well, the boat's not there. We don't put a boat out there. It's busy. I can, absolutely, we can do that. We can. There's no, no issue with that at all. So note to include Coal Lake as part of the patrols on water. Sure. Yeah. And then again, that can be reported back to uh, Protective Services Committee mm -hmm. to see what that what that's looking like. I'm happy so to do so. Because there's a lot of uh, quad activity yeah. that tick off people around there. Too. For sure. Absolutely. Councilor Belazer. Yeah, I'm going to go to the <clears throat> boating thing on both lakes too. Do you do any any checking of boats entering to the lake for evasive species? No, we don't have that authority to do that. that but that's federal. That's provision. correct. But the people that uh, we work with, the uh, Transport Canada folks, they do that, and the fish, fish and wildlife officers that we work with on the shoreline. So we're not just on the water. When we're not on the water, we're on the shore as right. well. So. Uh, we've seen a number of incidents where uh, when they were partnered with them, they, they do address that as well. Okay. Yeah. I have a question, <clears throat> Mr. Nelson. A few years ago, we partnered with the County of Wetaskiwin on a um, emergency response uh, on the lakes. Are we still working in conjunction with Wetaskiwin on that? Madam Chair, our program is not designed for rescue per se, so right. our boat is not involved with that okay. program. Our officers are aware of that, and we okay. do uh, liaise with those. Folks. We would support that, but our our support went to the county with Tasquin for the rescue boat. Correct. But we would participate where we could help. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that. On to goal five. Uh, goal five, uh, five point one. Uh, we address nuisance and unsightly premises complaints and. Uh, so those are complaint based and uh, we respond to uh, property concerns uh, within a certain period of time. And we try to address that by gaining compliance prior to enforcement. That's always been our goal and continues to be that way. Uh, we are re going to be reviewing the urban standards bylaw in the 2020 in the first or second quarter and uh, look forward to uh, adding some uh, robust amendments to that at that time. Okay, Councillor Vandenberg. Uh, on your first action, when do you um, respond to... I'm sorry, Councillor Lewis was concerned your microphone hadn't been lit up, uh, just to ensure that you're being heard. Okay. When do you typically respond to complaints? What period of time? Our, our response back to that person is usually the first day. So um, why is the unsightly uh, complaint by a resident uh, when it comes to property complaints within three days because uh through the chair i can tell you that a lot of times the complaints that come to us are not necessarily on sightly premises we work closely with planning development so between the two of us someone's going to get back to them and it's uh, it's about us making sure that the right department does so and and sometimes these complaints come on saturdays where we can't liaise with uh, planning and development we do operate seven days a week and they don't all right, thank you. And what do you mean by bring properties into compliance before winter? You mean this winter? 
Oh, each each season. So we try to make sure our files that are initiated at any given time and during the year finish, uh, and we try to get compliance prior to the winter snow because during the winter time it's it's t difficult to see and uh, and collect evidence. Does that make sense? Okay, and yeah. if I may, absolutely. Go ahead, Councilor Vandenberg. What are in your second action? What are your growing concerns regarding vacant <coughs> and occupied lands in country res? Oh, uh, this is with reference likely to the urban standards bylaw, the second one you're talking about. Okay, yeah. so then the action is having a look at that. Uh, yes, uh, uh, the ability to be able to react appropriately. Absolutely. So right now we use the Municipal Government Act, and we're looking at uh, helping ourselves by trying to uh, clarify the uh, expectations for Leduc County when it comes to vacant lands, particularly in a, in a couple of uh, hot areas. Uh, where uh, uh, there's a growing development of urban urban uh, urban development. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Just thank the, you, Mr. Uh, Nelson. Just the last part of that uh, to finish off on the very last page. Uh, we're also reviewing the animal control bylaw and uh, look forward to also adding some recommendations to amend and uh, update that bylaw as well. I'm, I'm noticing the word stray cats in there. Is that a reasonable action to be taking? It doesn't focus on that, Madam Chair. That is one of the topics that we may discuss uh, in a workshop with this group. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lewis. <clears throat> Thank you. I've had many calls from residents uh, regarding cats and they have nowhere within Leduc County to take them. Um, I think that's something that we need to talk about probably in protective services on, on how we, how we help them. Cool. So. With reference to that, I can just add that there are a number of options uh, available and it's up to us to make sure that they know what those are. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you for that. And, and I agree that especially in the more built up areas, cats can be an issue for some of the residents. Go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg. I gotta be careful on this mic thing. Okay. Um, the dog kennel, uh, dog kennels, the dog kennels in the county unauthorized, that is a, seems to be something that's uh, in division three, seems to be popping up. But what is the concern about um, not being able to react mm. appropriately to them, um, which then leads into a, dis a further discussion on the animal control bylaw. What is it, what tools do you need that you can't do that, um, that you need to have? Uh, is that what you're after here? That's part of the strategy? Yes. I'm thinking uh, that you have the ability to react to unauthorized uh, dog kennels. kennels, but I'm kind of catching maybe you don't. Well, I, I, through the chair, I can tell you that a, there's a growing uh, number of people who want to get involved in uh, that business, if you will. And um, some people have been here for a while. And what's happening is we've noticed that that pattern has, has grown uh, because of the lack of clarity in our bylaw. So we need to provide that clarity. Uh, not unlike the uh, constant special events bylaw that lacked clarity back then, uh, when we developed that bylaw, uh, things started to mo move a lot smoother. And so rather than you know waiting for those complaints, we want to make sure that uh, we can point people in the right direction and uh, allow them to know what they need to do and what, what they need to avoid in order to, uh, to do things well. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. So just to, <clears throat> um, and I'm, I don't know if this is a growing business in the County of Leduc, but I, I know, I know that there are some issues with, and I'm doing air quotes, dog daycares. Is there a definition between a kennel and a daycare? And are those daycares creating issues that people are thinking they're kennels? Or have you not had any issues? And if not, we probably should get ready for that. Adam that's Chair, a lot. I'm sorry. That's okay. It, you, <laughs> you're, what you're referring to is the need for the, our bylaw, our animal control bylaw to um, work well with the land use bylaw, which is also Correct. being re revised. So that's what uh, I meant to say. There's a, if I was to look at what you just said, it's a bit of a, a Venn diagram. There's some parts in the animal control bylaw, some yep. parts in the uh, land use bylaw, and they do overlap. And, yeah. and those are the parts that we need to make, make sure okay. they work well. Because again, that seems to be a bit of a growing it industry that mm -hmm. perhaps people are thinking is a kennel. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any further questions before we move into the budget? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, thank you for that. So what we're going to do is go to your leadership and administration page um, and have an opportunity for any questions 
or if you needed to highlight anything on this page. So leadership and administration, first, any questions from council? Councillor uh, Scobie, please remember your mic. Thank you. I was just noticing 10 and a half thousand increase in fuel for this year. Yes. What, what would your fuel bill be that, uh, that you get a $10,000 increase? Well, Madam, through the chair, I can advise that uh, fuel prices have increased and so I'll have our need to make those patrols that we've just been referring to. So uh, at any given time, at any given day, an officer puts on somewhere between 300 to 700 kilometers in Ladue County. This is a larger community. So um, that is based on a three-year average that we've looked at over the past couple of years. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Vandenberg. So $12,000 decrease in efficiencies with the e-ticket ticketing, but you had to spend another $6,500 in software for the program. So the efficiency is in half, less than. Is that a yearly thing when it comes to the software? Yes. So yeah, at the end of the day, in order for this to be efficient, you need to issue e-tickets. That's the only method uh, after a certain part in the first quarter of next year that we will be able to issue tickets Okay. when it comes to provincial violations. Okay. And that's the point I'm making. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. On to bylaw and animal control. <clears throat> I'm seeing 360 annual complaints, which is pretty significant. It's almost one a day. You're exactly. And uh, we don't see a, any, any a change in that next year. In fact, well, any decrease, we'll say. Okay. Questions on bylaw and animal control? Councillor Vandenberg? Um, false alarms, revenue. I mean, I, I don't... I, I, or. Okay, we talk about a lot that a lot in protective services, but is that kind of just that steady line? It's never changing up or down. The decrease suggests that they are going down, but we've gone through a year of COVID. Yes, Madam Chair, I can tell you that through the chair that um, it did see a sharp decrease during the first part of COVID, and uh, we are not projecting this decrease based on that one year. It's based on a three-year average. Okay, yeah. and then the other question I would have, if I may. Go ahead. Revenues, you're in the negative, but in your description overview, you are talking about issuing warning and violation tickets where appropriate. So, but I don't see any revenue to suggest you're doing that. The, uh, there's two components to that. So when it comes to bylaw enforcement, um, if and when we are able to uh, make the amendment that we're suggesting for the urban standards bylaw, we will be able to take advantage of actually issuing violation tickets as opposed to right now, which we can't. Um, and there are two other times when we issue tickets and now for bylaw enforcement uh, issues and that one of them is animal control. And we see a growing number of issues with that. And again, if we make another amendment to another bylaw, we may be able to address those kennels in the same way. Um, and then the other one is false alarms. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Lewis. Thank you very much. Um, Understanding that the last couple of years we had Cannabis Act come in, have you? Can you talk of how much action you've had? If that's the right way to say it, I can advise the members of this council. We have not had one complaint that I can remember. Okay, we interesting sort of the Y two K of <laughs> lots of worry but not much action. Mm -hmm. On to enhanced policing again. Opportunity for council members to ask any questions. I am seeing none. Regional training. Questions on regional training? Traffic safety.
I'm not sure if you can respond to this, uh, Mr. Nelson, or not. But on some roads, we were put we put up those electronic speed signs. Mm -hmm. Did we see a decrease in the amount of um, violations on roads where we had those? Because certainly they caught my attention. Through the chair, well, Madam Chair, I can tell you that the information that is collected from there is still being analyzed over a period of time. Uh, so we haven't compared those to our okay. violation charges, yeah. if you will, not yet. So that could be something coming to our committee and then we could look at whether or not we should be investing in more of those or if they are worth the time. Okay. Yeah, and there's another committee, the Traffic Advisory Committee that uh, oh, meets to put that information together for you folks. Okay, great. Councillor Vandenberg? So, I mean, part of you being here is the whole education component and keeping a handle, a pulse on what's going on in our community. Um, some of those tools require you to issue tickets and that sort of thing. Throughout your budget, there is no revenue in here. So I'm kind of wondering, when does that happen? And specifically, you talked about one of your goals at 2.2, and that is to do training uh, with other uh, outside forces. But I don't see any revenue in here to reflect that. They're all uh, negative revenue streams. So am I missing something here in terms of the revenue that should be there, I but I don't see any? Ms. Weiss will, the keeper of that will explain where that is. Go ahead, Ms. Weiss. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So when you look at the revenues in the service areas, revenues are always negative. So Mr. Nelson isn't showing a negative revenue stream. Revenues are always shown as a negative. Oh, in brackets is positive revenue? Yes. Yes. I must have just, did I not know that before? It, every year we we need to relearn a little bit about this. So, yes. <laughs> so, in other words, um, I look at this completely different. Thank you. <laughs> well done, he means. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Nelson? Aside from my, my concern about the ageism about the senior peace officer, um, being a senior myself, I'm just taking that a bit personally. Um, a great job. Thank you very much for the work that you do. Thank you to your staff um, for putting together the budget. And I have Councillor Belazer who has one last yeah, comment. It's, and, and it's got to do with the school resource officer. It was just, I should have asked this, but does that officer cover in the county now or because it's no. through Black Gold? Correct, uh, Madam Chair. I can tell you that uh, this uh, was a changed product, a change program from past year. So we did a pilot project in the last two months of this academic year. Then we continued on with September. So yes, it is uh, completely supported by uh, Black Gold and us, uh, and um, they, they support the funds. Um, and it is throughout Ladue County. So um, between uh, those two detachments, that'd be Thorsby and RCMP, uh, they provide hours and manpower to, to participate in that program. So that officer then would go out to New Sarepta too? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Good news. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Nelson, for your time. Thank you. We're going to go to fees and charges. Just, sorry, Madam Mayor. Yes. <laughs> Tab nine, page four. Um, I'm seeing no changes in these. Any questions on them? Councillor Vandenberg? Yeah, on the pound fees, I'm just curious because my dog did end up there that one day. Um, <laughs> there's a, there must be a county component of $20, but the pound itself then charges me room and board as well, I'm thinking. Is that correct? That uh, the, uh, the pound charges what we tell them and all that money comes to us. So I typically wouldn't have spent more than $20 to go get my dog. Unless uh, you're uh, one of the other providers, like, uh, uh, for example, City of Leduc. Yeah, no, it was black, the black hold on yeah. 14. Yeah, so we, uh, we and a number of other municipalities use that one pound. So yeah, the yes, result, they, they, uh, they charge what we tell them. Yeah, as a result of fireworks. My horses didn't make it to the pound, the fences did keep them in, so it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that explanation. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks again to you and your staff for all of your work. On to fire services.
Chief is coming forward, tab 18. Morning. Whenever you're ready, sir. Here this morning to present on our 2022 operational plan and 2022 budget. <clears throat> so, uh, perhaps start with your organizational chart. Um, the other piece we're pretty familiar with and then go right into your action plan, please. Very good. The uh, org chart this year does reflect 2022. So it does show the new five FTEs, which is uh, a change from last year. Additionally, uh, during 2021, uh, we had uh, our HR and admin support transferred to corporate. So uh, we only have one admin now. That's the only other change. Wow. Questions on the organization chart, which will be explained, changes will be explained in your action plan, correct? Go ahead, Councillor Scobie. I see your paid on call firefighters. Uh, you got uh, the numbers of them there. Is that what the maximum would be if you have them or is that that's, what's supposed to be there? That's the positions that are available and through attrition and turnover year to year, we lose some and re recruit some. And so that's the numbers that that's okay. our goal. I just I just realized that like on Thorsby, we're in, I don't think we're anywhere near 20 people right now. So but no, it's, it's reflected in there is that's be nice if we could be. Yeah, it'd be wonderful if we could. Yes. OK, thank you for that clarification. On to the action plan, Chief. All right. <coughs> and through the mayor. So we have two strategic priorities this year and. Uh, five department goals. So our strategic priorities are, are carrying on with our regional emergency management uh, leadership is goal one and goal two is uh, carrying on with our borderless service delivery, specifically the uh, change in the contract with Warburg uh, district. Okay. Goal three, we are going to revise bylaw 1212, our fire service bylaw, which is big and uh, needs updating. Uh, goal four, uh, we're going to look at the uh, recommendations from the standard of cover and station location master plan we presented to council last spring and uh, sort of do some long range and short range planning based on that. Uh, goal five, uh, we want to try and get our firefighter training back up to pre-pandemic, but of course we keep getting these variants coming around. So we train when we can and we, uh, we tuck and cover when we can't. So Goal six, uh, we, we're, we wanna provide some team building opportunities. And as you may appreciate, firefighting is more than just training and experience, it's reliance on the team. And we haven't been able to do that as much uh, in a training environment. I mean, certainly our call volume is up, but we need our guys and girls to be able to know and depend on each other. So looking at some opportunities there. And then uh, just an increase in a bit of public education. Um, maybe even traffic control in conjunction with other departments. We all remembered to put our pants on after COVID, but nobody remembered how to drive. We get a vehicle accident or two every day now. So wow. need some public education. Council, uh, Councilor Lewis has a question. Thank you. There's a revenue source for, for fire services to attend collisions as well. Is that correct? Yes, we do charge for attendance at collisions. If it's on a highway, we bill directly to the Alberta government. And if it's on a road, we bill to the insurance. Thank you. Councillor Vandenberg. I understand the, the need for fire safety education, um, but I don't know how you're going to increase that than what you're already doing with uh, publications and uh, spending time at schools and whatnot. Because um, there's also a, a provincial component to this as well, uh, that of the uh, municipal. So um, mm. will you later on talk about what that increase looks like? Yeah, I can answer that right now if you want, uh, through the mayor. Um, for the last two years, we haven't been able to go to the schools, so we need to get back into there. We were looking at a, a cadet program, which got interrupted by COVID as well. And just general fire safety messaging, uh, we're going to have some more uh, uh, traction to be able to get more messaging out, so we want to okay. develop that. Okay. Continue on. <coughs> So now you want me to go into the strategies? I would love you to. All right. So strategy one, one, obviously we're going to amend 
a sub-regional emergency management agreement with the participating uh, municipalities. As you know, uh, uh, last year, the city of Leduc and the city of Beaumont were asked that they could do on their own, which is good. And we're gonna support the smaller municipalities. And, uh, you know, we're just continuing on with that piece of work. Just a question on that, if I may, Chief, and I apologize. Um, I know that all of the municipalities that we were working with have, have new leadership. Have you been able to reach out and, and start some of that now, or you're waiting for them to settle into their new roles? Yes, since uh, Madam Mary, in answer to your question, since the election last month, we have been waiting for the councils okay. to, you know, find their seats and their Correct. and their corporate key to the corporate washroom. So was, <laughs> and then we are going to have to reintroduce yeah. and re uh, re explain this okay. to the new councils. Yeah. Thank you. Continue on. Okay. So that and uh, so uh, goal two, strategy two point one, new fire service agreement. That is a, a pickup from where we left off with our discussions with Warburg uh, from. I think the last time we met was in the spring before the before the election. So yep. we'll have to re uh, reorganize those discussions. And we do have something to start with. So hopefully it's not starting from square one. Councilor Vanderman. Yeah. So like the rest of council has not been uh, um, uh, brought up to speed on on any of these talks. Um, but I see that a new agreement to be approved by Q4 of 2022. Why would it take a whole year to reach an agreement from so, now, particularly when you've got some underlying already discussed, which I don't know anything about. Uh, through the mayor, if I was uh, projecting it last year, I would have said it would have never taken to Q1 2021. <laughs> but uh, in the end, last year, it, it disintegrated into a point where it needs to be completely rebuilt. Hopefully, like the mayor says, we can you know, get back on track pretty quickly. And maybe it won't be Q4. I just didn't want to. I want to uh, overpromise and overdeliver, uh, underpromise and overdeliver. All right. And I believe, and I'm going to refer to Mr. Thomas. We did bring the agreement in principle to a governance and priorities committee. I I think back in March, April, or May. Uh, I'm not sure if you were. At, uh, you might have been away from that one meeting, Councillor Vandenberg. But uh, Mr. Thomas will know. Uh, Madam Chair, we did have some discussions with council in camera, um, just to discussions regarding some of the particulars and conditions in the agreement. I don't believe we provided the agreement in its entirety to this council, but it has been provided to uh, the village of uh, Warburg's negotiating committee. So we do have a draft agreement that we need to bring forward to the table with the village of Warburg and uh, initiate those discussions again. Because they have some new members at, at the village, we're not sure how long this is going to take. Um, we are planning to wait until January 1 yes. to initiate discussions with their administration just to see what their timeframes will be. But that will occur in December 1, uh, January 1, uh, and allow that municipality to have some time to organize their, themselves. So we will find some time to bring the draft agreement that didn't go just as a review to council um, in an in-camera session um, in the new near future. Okay. Noted. Thank you. All right, strategy three, uh, we want to revise bylaw 1212. Uh, as you know, we're later uh, this month or in, within the next month, we're going to be bringing the burning bylaw to council. And right now, parts of that is incorporated into the bylaw 1212. So we just want to clean up that. That bylaw is big and, and cumbersome, and we just want to clarify some things, modernize it. Perfect. Strategy 4.1. So uh, again, with the standard of cover station location master plan, uh, council supported us to uh, um, create a temporary fire station here and uh, hire a day shift crew. We wanna look at some of the other recommendations coming out of that study and uh, look at some short-term or long-term goals coming out of that work. Questions on that? Okay, goal five. Goal five. So again, as I said, uh, 
you know, this, this pandemic has uh, impacted our training ability quite significantly. We've, we've uh, done a lot more online training. We've done small group training when we could. We did some outside training during the summer, which was awesome. We just need to make sure that we can uh, stay as prepared as we can as, as this uh, pandemic ebbs and flows. So Chief, um, <clears throat> one of the things we heard that Parks and Rec is working on is a youth sort of leadership training program. I had suggested that they connect with you because you were talking about um, doing something around the junior firefighters, which would give that leadership opportunity. And perhaps that's an op uh, that chance to kind of work together with them using their expertise around um, doing that piece um, just as a, because I know you want to do it. I know the pandemic has got in your way. Um, an yeah. opportunity. Thanks. I noted that and I'll uh, reach out to Parks and Rec and Thank see you. where we can collaborate. Thank you. Goal six. Goal six, uh, like I talked about, it's, you know, firefighting isn't all just necessarily about training and experience. It's about the team and it's about the confidence in each other. Uh, in a minute, you could have to put each other's life on the line and you need to have the confidence in that person. So some team building opportunities uh, throughout the year. And strategy seven uh, is just some added fire safety material, uh, public education, get back into the schools, which we haven't been able to get into for two years. Uh, we did some drop offs, porch, porch pickups or whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call them, <laughs> uh, some materials to the schools, but we, we haven't yeah. been able to do any uh, formal presentations like we used to. So, so just a, a couple of things on both of those. Um, I really did appreciate <clears throat> the graduations and pieces like that, that I was able, I think your team did a great job. They were number one and you could certainly feel um, the partnership and the com camaraderie that the, that the firefighters felt for each other. So I understand how important that is to do. The second one is, and it kind of links back to what Councillor Vandenberg was saying about, you know, what else are we going to do for fire safety presentations? And so I, I started to think about that because in some ways I agree with them, but then we have a new bylaw coming out and that's going to be, um, I think, have some changes, not necessarily the ones that say change your uh, batteries in your smoke detector, but here's an idea. You actually can't burn the ditch because it doesn't belong to you. And I think that there are some of those longstanding things that people have done with good intentions for good reasons that we're going to have to re-educate around. And I know I had many, 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 many conversations about that. So I think as the bylaw rolls out, there's probably going to be some of those pieces that we are going to have to revisit and have good rationale for as well. Because there's lots of people who say, well, if I can't cut the ditch, then burning it's better and it helps with flow. And there's a whole bunch of good reasons. So I, I think that there, we have to relook at, we have to rethink about what we have to educate on, but I think there's some real educational needs. Councillor Smith. This is uh, in response to Councillor Vandenberg. Is it, it's 20, what is it, 2022? Is the time come to change the name from firefighters to maybe fire managers, something softer? Because I know Councillor Vandenberg was a little concerned with the violence. In the name of firefighters, could it not be fire managers, fire suppressors? It is 2022, after all. We, it'll be taken under consideration and perhaps brought back to another meeting. I'm not, the I'm not sure we're going to be groundbreaking here today by the look on the chief's face. <laughs> With all due respect, you tell him. <laughs> all right. It's 120 alpha male and alpha female personalities. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg. Well, I would like to add to um, the chair's uh, point of view, not so much Councillor Smith's, but um, <laughs> along that vein of increased um, education and awareness, this Fire Smart program <coughs> is something yes, that should probably agreed. take a little bit more of a front seat. Uh, and I'm not one that hops on the bandwagons when it comes to this whole climate thing, but the reg regardless uh, if the climate is changing or not, we need to start thinking in terms of fire loads in and around our properties um, and potentially flash flood and or flood mitigation, uh, those type of emergencies um, is, and I don't know that that's not part of the fire smart, but that program gets people thinking about just outside of, of what's happening outside their door. And I think that's part of um, what we need to um, uh, 
um, be pressing upon when it comes to uh, that education. the education that away from our traditional uh, uh, opportunities, I think. All good ideas. Thank you. I've noted them. We handed out magnets this summer with hurricane or tornado preparedness. Yep. Um, fire smart, I'm aware of. Problem is you cut all the trees, then you got to worry about the grass. But, you know, there's uh, certainly flooding is identified as one of the top risks for the county. So some good opportunities for education. And just building on that, if I could, certainly working perhaps with planning and development so that when people are looking to build in the in the county, perhaps they do get a flyer that says, have you considered? Because everybody wants to live in the trees and understanding if that's your choice, what you have to be careful about. And that way it's a one shot piece. Don't know, just, I just like thinking more might work to planning and development is a good idea. I appreciate your comments, Madam Mayor, because obviously there's a lot of newcomers and they yep. got to learn from somewhere, so. Yeah, start from there. Councillor Vandenberg. No, I just want to go back to your operational plan, just uh, what page, very please? quickly. First page, fleet facilities. Um, under maintaining a fleet of 65 uh, frontline apparatus, through a fleet coordinator and a fire equipment technician. That comes across to me as quite a daunting task. And I do believe that um, that includes CVIPs as well. And I believe it's every two years though, was the extension or the change to help with that? Every one year. Every year. So 65 CVIPs plus everything else to do with 65 units. Am I understanding that correctly? Uh, just over half of our units are require a CVIP. Uh, I think when three years ago we were outsourcing uh, some of them and through good planning the last couple of years we've been able to do them all in-house so it's being managed. Okay I just want to paint a bigger picture here of going out getting it bringing it in coordinating all that and between one and a half guys like a coordinator is not the same level as a, as a technician. Uh, technician is a mechanic, right? Through the mayor, they're both heavy equipment mechanics, technicians, they both work on the trucks. Okay. One's just the supervisor of the other. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. But still, that's a lot of work for two guys. They're busy. Okay. Better to be looking at it than looking for it when it comes to work. Okay, on to your uh, budget, Chief. Uh, we're gonna start with leadership and administration. And just as a reminder, that goes on to the next page as well. Questions for the chief. I'm seeing none at this time. We'll go over to emergency management. And the regional emergency management is a mandate, correct? Or a recommendation from the province? It's because of the bill eight and the requirement, the, the smaller municipalities right. can't meet the requirement. So, so they're required to. This is our way of working collaboratively once again with the smaller municipalities. Correct. In and around and, the Duke County. And even through our own uh, scenarios, eventually we would run out of resources if it was a longer scenario. So correct. they can assist that way too. Right. Okay, any questions on emergency management? Only we'll be, one. Go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg. The revenue in there, is that fair share? So 20 grand in, well, I guess 37 and a half. And for 95, uh, 10 or 100,000 in, in uh, expenses. Is that fair share? Uh, the revenue is mainly through an agreement with Calmar currently, and uh, the specific revenue that could be generated from the emergency management agency, who pays for what, is yet to be determined. So there's a potential for more revenue there, but not yet. Okay. 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 Fleet and facilities. And under fleet and facilities, thank you. We already had a question about um, are your two mechanics sufficient and you 
have agreed that they're they're busy and certainly if we need if there's a need then we'll look at that as well but not for 2022 well and through the mayor we're looking at other ways of you know you talked about picking up and moving them into the shop and stuff yeah. we're always looking at efficiencies that way so okay any questions on fleet and facilities And I'm going to assume at $10,000, the dryer that you're using to dry gear in Thorsby isn't a Samsung. No, it's an air dryer. There is none. Sorry. <laughs> That's, it, we just hang our clothes there. Right. <laughs> Thank you. So it'd be nice to get a dryer. So there, it is a specialized piece of equipment. Oh, yes. It Thank is you. a special gear dryer. Okay. Thank you. On to operations. Seeing none. I am seeing no hands up at this time. Do you well, have a question, Councillor Vandenberg? And I've been Councilor saying Smith this seems to all think the way you. through the increase of the FTEs in Platoon Chief um, at six hundred and fifty thousand is about one hundred twenty-four thousand dollars a person. I, I just that just seems like a lot to me. And and plus you have. Uh, a very well-trained and oiled staff. I, I, I don't get the benefit of a platoon chief. Um, in a year's time, I get it. Um, but at this point in time, I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't comprehend. It so doesn't make sense to me. Can you talk a little bit about the, what, just what Councillor Vandenberg is referring to and then the cost of, uh, so first as then the organization and then the cost of. We're gonna talk about span of control and oversight. Our deputies, I have four deputies. They all have their portfolios. I have a deputy of operations. Each of the deputies takes a week to do that nighttime coverage. When we're looking into putting in a full-time crew, I need oversight. Right. I, I mean- that, So the platoon chief the is platoon the oversight is for oversight. the full-time crew right. that we're putting in to help manage here in the NISCU and airport area. That's correct. And in my experience, that's <clears throat> one role a captain can do too. Um, you know, I mean, I just, I have a background in it and I'm just having a problem with it. Okay. So. Okay. But the, the chief is confident that that's the right decision. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Councillor Vandenberg. Public safety, education and safety codes. Seeing none, on to training. How many regional training activities did we host prior to COVID and have we been able to host since? Through 2020 and 2021, it was very few. Right. Most are either they don't have the budget anymore or they don't have the confidence or right. we didn't have the safety in place depending on where we were with the pandemic. So our external hosting has dropped right off. Hopefully that'll come back in the next year or two. And, but it has prior to COVID was something that was highly sought after. We had lots of interest in our training. Yeah, from in the Edmonton region, from as far away as Mournville, they were coming here. Okay, that's good to know. And hopefully um, as we work through this, that'll come back. <clears throat> Any other questions on training? All right, where to, oh, go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg, sorry. So thank you for your presentation and the detail to it. Um, while you're here, I wanna talk about the strategy around acquiring fire apparatus. And one of the things that um, I've tried to do some research in is the validity of a fire apparatus and it's pump um, that it's mandated by ULC that you can only get 20 years out of it. Um, I can't find anything uh, in that regard. I don't have access to it. The way I look at it is we got a, we, the Chevy versus a Cadillac. Are we buying a bunch of Cadillacs? And 
I, I see the advantages to replace, and that is new technologies, occupant safety, you know, in the cab and whatnot. And I come from a midship. I was a firefighter that operated out of a midship. And new technologies and suppression put the wet stuff on the on the on the wet on the, the red stuff. Okay, foams. That's tech new technology. Um, highest degree of safety concern. We need the highest degree of safety concern. Once again, Chevy versus Cadillac. I think the Chevy performs to that standard just as well as the Cadillac. Uh, efficiencies and power emissions and, and uh, that sort of thing. Um, I guess I'm kind of wondering, are we buying what we need to have or are we buying what we'd like to have? So that's just, my question. Just before you respond, um, Ms. Weiss, can you put up on the overhead, because I'm not sure everybody has their MPCP binder. It is um, in there under CP002. 002. Thank you. Just so that everyone is understanding uh, what Councillor Vandenberg is talking about. We have talked about this um, during that discussion. Councillor Vandenberg just has some additional questions. The main one, I guess, being is, is it a cattle? Can we buy a Chevy? Well, if you take a look, stand back and have a look at it, it's 43,000 kilometers, it's got 1,100 hours. And one of the, the key thing is the ULC on the pump. Um, okay, how much does it cost to replace a pump? It's gotta be a whole lot cheaper than $412,000. I guess what I'm saying is, is there other ways of looking at this before we actually retire this unit so that other, another rural municipality will come and pick it up and put it in the service? So I guess this whole front line versus, I don't even know what that is, and I should know, but I don't, versus a secondary line. I don't, how is it that these other places are picking up uh, the stuff that, uh, and maybe they're putting in a fire pump and they're good for, it's that whole question around the Chevy versus the Cadillac. Okay, Ready? if you can shed some light on why we are um, purchasing and other people are purchasing our old ones. So th through the mayor, it's a really good question and it's not, it's not a simplest answer. However, I'll, I'll say this, a little bit of it's about risk. A lot of it, it's about safety, dependability and legislative requirements. So if the, the suggested replacement is 15 years on a frontline apparatus. That's the first truck out the door. It shouldn't be more than 15 years old. You can use that truck as a second truck until it's 20. And you can use it as a reserve. If the front two don't start and it will, you can run that truck 20 to 25 years. So that's the life cycle. After 25 years, they're scrap or used by the hot tub water company or the, the landscape guy, they're not in service after 25 years. The other piece about extending the life cycle on the pump, ULC has a 20 year rating on the pump. That's the United Laboratories. There's, we don't have a say on that. We, the, you can ex rebuild it and extend the life five years, but you have to bring every piece of the truck up to current code and current standards. And like it says in there, the cost of doing that for, and you're still on a 20 year old chassis for a five year mm -hmm. extension, it doesn't make cost, it doesn't make sense from a cost versus value perspective. So you could extend these trucks another five years, but you're probably investing that much money just into refurbishing them. So that leads me to another question, who is resetting all these standards? And, and I mean, at some point you, you gotta say, whoa, hang on here. I mean, once again, I ran out of a midship. We didn't have these, these fancy apparatus back then, but we still did the job safely. So who is writing all these standards that, we, that you have to subscribe to? And, and we should maybe have a say with them and because the cost in municipalities, this is significant dollars, labor, apparatus, SEBA, AFRAX radios, that's a lot of money that is kind of being forced to through you to us. And so that's why I'm, trying, I'm not afraid to start opening up this conversation. Right. And through the mayor, I appreciate life cycle management. It's yep. getting darned expensive. 
right? It's getting darn expensive. So who sets the standards and could we have a conversation with and or uh, share some concerns with whoever, I I'm sure it's a provincial organization, it generally is. So as far as Foster Fire Underwriter Survey, I've already got an appointment coming up to meet with Fire Underwriter Survey okay. because uh, Ladue County is due in 2022 or 2023 to have ours redone. And if our trucks are too old, they could drop our category, which may or may not impact our fire cost of our fire insurance portion of our insurance. That's a little bit dependent on the broker, because I would say that in a paid on call response, we're probably already at the top rate for fire insurance. Well, I can add to that fire insurance because uh, I did talk to RMA Genesis and they're essentially saying because you're so regulated that it's whatever you bring to the table will insure. They don't really have a say in what you can or cannot operate other than it's got to be in compliance. For, for clarification, I'm not talking about the rig. I'm talking about property insurance, the, the fire, the fire insurance portion of your property insurance. Okay. So can we have something come to a workshop? I'm, I'm not going to say that the protective services committee, not everybody sits on this, but I, I think Councillor Vandenberg, we have, we're starting to look at an advocacy committee. Is there an opportunity to have those conversations with whomever is making these decisions and just talk about that? I mean, I would say that probably nobody sitting here is driving a 20 year old vehicle. I could also see that a 20 year old truck in the town of Kalmar, which has a very small radius is different than a 20 year old truck that's driving from you know, Kalmar to South Wizard Lake. Um, but I think that there's lots of questions here that we need to have an opportunity to talk to. And Kyle, uh, Mr. Thomas, did you have a comment uh, or? A if I may, Madam Chair, just a couple of things. So the underwriters uh, survey did perform an evaluation of NISCU specifically a couple of years ago. And because of our service uh, being quite proactive and, and having a lot of apparatuses and providing very good services to our businesses, the insurance rates actually drop for some of our businesses. Okay. Um, and this is the correlation between attractiveness, retention of businesses, and, and promoting uh, a healthy organization or a healthy industrial park. So I think it's very wise, your suggestion, that we do bring this to a workshop and have a discussion about how the service that we provide impacts our businesses and their ability to insure themselves, because it is a key component. See, these are all worthwhile things yeah. to go back to. I'm representing the taxpayers who are, are bucking up for yeah. this. And so I have to ask these questions. And again, just like we work hard to keep our water and our sewer rates lower for industrial customers, this is another example. Uh, thank you for bringing it up. And I, I do believe it's a really good conversation to understand that, as well as something perhaps on our advocacy agenda as well. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Lewis? Thank you. Just looking at, at the total cost is not the 412500 It's actually the 825000 knowing that it's off warranty or out of your service area of 20 years, is another municipality able to go to an auction and pick this up and then use it for fire? It's 20 years old. They can't do it. Not in Canada. Not, yeah, quite often these trucks are donated to South America, or like I said, they're used by landscape companies or firefighters use them yeah. as lawn ornaments. And I mean, it's, they don't go into active service. The risk just isn't, if, if, if that truck was in service at 25, 23 years yeah. old, and it broke down on the way to a call and the insurance got involved, Ladue County be on the hook for everything. Even if, and the way it works with the risk is it's the deep pockets. Even if Ladue County was only found responsible 1%, they'd pay the whole claim because they have the deep pockets. So it's, it's, it's yep. not only about safety, it's about risk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Weiss. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If we could head back to the fees and charges under tab nine, page seven. And I do see there's some changes on this, the back side of that page. Uh, Chief, if you could respond to those and that storage tanks 
um, inspection, et cetera, and we are just getting a copy of that. So the, we're just bringing the costs in line with other uh, inspection fees, okay. and uh, that's why this has changed. All right. You'll notice $80 is pretty much across the board now. Yep. Any questions on the fees and charges? Otherwise, there are no changes. Seeing none. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for um, your expertise today and being able to respond to questions, not in your budget, but certainly your ability to do that in a way that helped us make sense of it. Thanks once again to you and your staff for preparing the budget. And as always, uh, to the leadership you provide to keep the residents and the businesses of Leduc County safe, greatly appreciated by council. We don't have the opportunity to say that very often, but we will be saying that today. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks for your support too, as I leave. Yeah, thanks for your support because really together we're doing the right thing here. We are. We're understanding it together. There's no doubt about that. Okay, where to now, Ms. Weiss? Thank you, Madam Mayor. So we're going to go to tab 20, the legislative budget. So through the legislative budget, this is council's budget. I will go right to the service overview. There is no operational plan for this. <laughs> so this budget basically um, is for council to provide direction to county administration and in their support to our rate payers. So were there any questions on the legislative budget page? Questions on the legislative budget, which is council budget. Councillor Lewis. Can you explain, because I know we haven't gotten a raise, um, the increase related to the earnings and benefits? Sure. Please. So through the chair, that is related to any of the components that we had discussed back in camera on November 29th. So if there was a change to COLA, if there was a change to benefits, that would be reflected in here? That's correct. It's but all council, rolled in. But council is currently for 2022 not looking at an increase in their basic salary. That, aside from they would be included in the COLA component. If that was the decision of council. Yes. Okay. Councillor Vandenberg? Um, just for clarity uh, on that same page, 2-200. Um, the actual for 2020 was 45. That reflects the whole pandemic, your virtual world, where you didn't go anywhere, you didn't get together with anybody, and that's and those costs were substantially down. So what was projected for a budget of 100,000, we spent less than half of that. Is that how I read that correctly? Through the chair, that is correct. That there was mileage less mileage as well as less conventions and online conventions. Thank you. Okay, further questions? Seeing none, where to next, Ms. Weiss? So we'll go to tab 19, which is fiscal services and general non-departmental. So this area includes all of our tax revenues, our interest, tax penalties, any unconditional grants, such as workers' compensation board rebate, as well as Leduc and district regional waste management facility <laughs> landfill rebate. That's a mouthful. Um, so that's what's reflected in this particular budget. It also includes the Leduc Regional Housing Foundation. So we hold a long-term loan on their behalf. And so there is a flow through where in the 1-900 section, we have the revenue. And then in the 2-900 section, oh, sorry, 2-800 section, we have the offsetting expense. So we're spending 265 a year. Questions? Go ahead, Councillor Lewis. And not to put you on the spot, do you know how many years are left on that debenture for the housing? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so
So that through the chair, that debenture expires December 15th of 2029 will be our last payment. One ways away. <clears throat> Any other questions on fiscal services and general non-departmental? Go ahead. And just a clarity one on that debenture. That's our contribution, 265,000. Uh, no. No, through the chair. It's a direct flow through. So we collect the debenture payment from them. We pay them and then we collect that money through Leduc Regional Housing. Because the regional housing could not borrow. What is our contribution to that number? The, what is our requisition to Leduc Housing? That's our next, our tab 24. Can I answer that when we get to the next department? So just to clarify, Leduc Housing cannot borrow. And so we are borrowing on their behalf. And that's what that responds to. Yes, Madam Mayor, that's my understanding. Okay. Question? No. Nope. Nope. Stretching? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so if we can move on to tab 24, which is our requisition expenditures. So we have, there is no change in the requisitions at interim. What the budget change that you are seeing is a reduction to the city of Ladue cost share based on estimated assessment change through at EIA, okay. on EIA properties. And I will, So we, we do adjust the requisitions at final budget. And if you just bear with me one moment, I'll find out the requisition amount for. So on the requisitions sheet, it shows a 1.06 decrease and that's due to assessment decrease at the airport. Did I hear that correctly? That, that is correct. Yes, Madam Mayor, that is correct. Thank you. And so our, to answer Councillor Vandenberg's question from previously, our Leduc Regional Housing Facility, our requisition is anticipated to be $226,015. With the caveat that we haven't received all of that information yet. Typically that comes during their January, budget. February, yeah. during their component. Okay. Go ahead. And Dividing that 226,000 over the number of residents, um, it's $3 a tax, right? Per property, is that what it's? We have approximately 11,500 tax notices that go out, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Vandenberg. And, and I don't sit on the board, but how many stakeholders are in there? Um, like how many municipalities five? in the Liddy Housing Court? All of them. All of well, them. Warburg, All of them. Warburg, Thorsby, Telmer. City of Leduc. City of uh, Leduc. Beaumont. Uh, Beaumont. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So of that 226000 what do our taxpayers pay? 226000 That is ours. That's that is our, our portion, portion to The it? other municipalities actually pay their own. Yeah. Okay. Based on, on their assessment. Assessment. We pay the highest amount of the other partners. Yes. You haven't been to a meeting, how would you know? He remembers from last year. It's a lot. Okay. Thank you. All right. We are now going to go to review of adjustment summary from 2021 to final. Is that correct? But before we do that, we're going to take a quick five minute break. So I'm going to call a recess, Michelle. Oops, now I've created issues with live streaming. Ah. Thank you and uh, welcome back. We are going on to review of adjustment summary from 2021 final to 2022 interim. Um, and who's leading this, Ms. Klamosko? Ms. Klamosko, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> so the first item that we have on the adjustment summary is the building life cycle maintenance. Um, so there was a question raised about the air handling unit. 
So I do have a, a response um, that I received from, um, from corporate services. So various work is happening within that um, <coughs> public workshop. So um, we have that, that ultimately impacts the air quality. So mechanics working on vehicles, so the vehicle exhaust, there's welding, painting, um, other work being done with solvents and chemicals. So within this project, the one thing that we looked at administratively um, in terms of looking to replace this unit proactively as opposed to should it fail is just around some of the concerns about how long this unit could be down for potentially should something fail on the unit. Just because there's uncertainty, depending um, you know, what breaks down, we don't have uh, you know, certainty with how long it would take to potentially get parts to replace and how long that unit would be down for. And the impact of that unit being down would be that the work within those shops would not be able to be done because that air exchange is not occurring. So one thing that we've implemented within asset management is looking at doing risk assessment in terms of um, the impact that that uh, project has in terms of, of risk. So I just wanted to just highlight a, a little bit of the piece of work that, that we're doing within that, just because this particular project, um, when we apply this risk assessment to it, has a higher risk than let's say a project of a photocopier with in an office setting. Uh, we would apply a higher risk and that is why we would make a recommendation potentially to replace this more proactively than uh, a different piece of equipment. So um, the risk assessments, what we go through are two components. So the likelihood of failure and then the consequence of failure. So you'll see here within the section of likelihood of failure, we've applied, it's a five point scale looking at, it's not likely, uh, not very likely, likely, highly likely, or near certainty. So we apply a probability. So again, these are, um, you know, estimates given uh, where we believe the condition is for the piece of equipment. So in this case, we would say that, you know, not very likely or likely could be given the age of this unit that we would apply to this circumstance for this unit. So going to the next section, when we look at consequence of failure, so here we look at these three different aspects and we assess uh, what do we believe the potential impact would be if this equipment failed. So in this specific piece of equipment, we look primarily, um, you know, we look to impact on performance. So because we are doing repairs various of uh, various equipment within this shop, we look that there is the potential, um, you know, that we're not going to achieve specific um, timelines can be a slip in schedule. So we're looking at perhaps even that number four, unable to achieve multiple goals or major slip in schedule because of our inability to do the repairs in that, that shop. So it's a little bit of a higher risk in terms of consequence of failure. So you can look at that three or four. So also there's, I mean, ultimately if we have concerns around air quality, then we would limit um, staff working in that, in that shop. So going to the second page of that assessment, we then apply those two uh, criteria to to this risk matrix. So when you look at the likelihood being between a two and a three, and can you lift it up just a little more, please? There we go. And then you look at the consequence along the bottom being a four, if we look at between the two and the three, we're applying a medium risk or a high risk to this unit, the consequence. So this is a little bit of the work that we're doing administratively to help prioritize projects. So I just wanted to highlight that. So, um, so from this project perspective, we just see it as a medium to high risk that if we do not uh, proactively replace this, we do have some risk and potential impact to meeting our deliverables just because of the consequence of the shop not being available for us to do work. Thank you. Councillor Belazer has a question or a comment. No question. So have we checked into the supplier of this, <laughs> the availability of parts, and if parts are even available, does that figure in at all? Does, uh, if it's going to be like some of the vehicles now, they can't get ahead for a fairly new truck. Is, is, does something like that fit in? So, you know, we, 
weren't able to go just because there's you you just can't anticipate necessarily what piece of equipment may fail we just don't have that certainty on depending what fails in the unit what that consequence around the supply chain um, or a potential full replacement what kind of delay that would cause so that um, we just don't have that information readily available and again, the money would not be spent until the item was bought. So if there is a two and a half year delay in getting it, then the money would stay for two and a half years. Thank you, Councillor Vandenberg. Um, I really like the risk assessment matrix. Um, it's not new. It's been out there for a long time. <coughs> I participated in it for many years. Um, but I would say that you've got one element missing and that's there's a controls. So when you sign a risk to something and you determine that it's medium risk, high risk, uh, the next thing you do is you look at uh, uh, implementing controls. For example, instead of having to be inside to do the work, you move it outside to do the work, depending on the, what the work is. So it doesn't, it doesn't stop you from doing it. Another control is availability. Uh, in this case, availability of parts. And that is to Councillor Belazer's point, pre-buy the parts and sit them up on the shelf because you know that it's, it will fail, but we just don't know when. And so the matrix is, like I said, I've used it before, but there's a component missing. And that is, you know, environmental controls, engineered controls. These are elements that fit in to mitigate that risk, um, to have a broader picture of it. Um, so it's my suggestion that this is excellent. This is what you have to do, but there's another component to it. Absolutely. This is just a small part of the work that we're doing around risk, because ultimately, um, as we work through doing this type of risk assessment on our various assets, we will we also have risk mitigation strategies. So ultimately, when we assign a risk of a highest risk or a high risk to an asset, the, the expectation is that risk mitigation plan is looked at and determined for exactly those reasons. Perhaps there's certain actions that we can take uh, proactively um, to do something differently or to prepare for. So absolutely, that is also part of the work that we're doing. So just to our county manager, just a quick process question. This is the opportunity for council to decide if we want this in our budget um, at interim or we do not. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. This is decision-making time, Madam Chair. Um, okay, so the information is there. Um, $27,000 impact on our tax, but that would be funded by reserves. Any further information that anybody needs now before we decide whether we wanna keep that in the budget or remove it for the 2022 interim budget? I'm not seeing any hands, um, so I am going to just ask by show of hands who would like to have that remain in the budget, hand up. That is unanimous, thank you. Next item. So the next item on the adjustment summary is the replacement of a quad. So administratively, we have uh, been looking at the opportunity that we discussed in terms of utilizing a quad within the enforcement services department and, and doing a, a switch within departments. So it is administration's recommendation to remove the replacement of a quad in the 2022 budget. Thank you for that. And a big thank you to um, <laughs> Councillor Scobie who made that suggestion and had I had missed it totally. So uh, again, Great work from council looking very specifically at the items in there and trying to find efficiencies. Thank you. Um, is there anyone here who would like to have that stay in the budget? I am seeing none, it will be removed. Thank you very much. On to NISCU water facility fence improvements. Another great question on this one, whenever you're ready. So for this project, it is also administration's recommendation that it be removed from the 2022 interim budget. So in the new year, the expectation would be that the utilities department would go out and receive quotes for the exact 
scope of work that is required given um, the considerations around the failure of the last fence and considerations whether we need to have um, you know longer um, drilling for the posts so that we would look to get that uh, quote and that scope of work confirmed and then look to add the project that final budget um, once we receive that information. Okay, and just a thank you on that one. <clears throat> and we believe in giving credit where credit's due to Councillor Vandenberg for questioning the price on that. I think that as long as there, there isn't um, an, a security issue between now or we're confident that nothing's going to happen or semi-confident, not using the risk matrix at all, but knowing that uh, the fence has been down for a while, um, moving ahead, putting it into uh, looking at RFPs for final budget makes sense. Councillor Vandenberg. I just want to point out that due to climate change, the wind might blow the other way and actually stand it up for you. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Anybody unsure about that item? All right, so it will be removed. We had one item come up from below the line for discussion. Go ahead. Ms. Klonosko. Okay. So when we discussed uh, the new initiatives, the last link program administration had shown this new initiative under the line. In our conversation that we had last week, uh, there were many questions that were raised in terms of a, a decision on this program. So, um, you know, I turn the discussion there's, I think, further information that administration uh, requires time to solidify. However, um, I turned it over to council to discuss whether they would like to um, include budget dollars towards this program in the 2022 budget. Just a question. I mean, some of the some of the questions. I thought the questions that council brought forward <clears throat> were valid and good, and talking about good use of taxpayer dollars. Is it is there a potential to get information back before final budget, Coun um, Councillor? Mr. Coleman, I almost demoted you. <laughs> <laughs> it would be an honor, Madam Chair. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I think administratively we've talked about this a fair bit and I, and I know uh, this subject's been touched on a, a couple times over the last number of years. Uh, there's been some work done at Public Works Committee. Uh, I, I think it, my recommendation to Council would be this, that. There is time uh, at final budget to bring this back. It would allow us between now and then to bring this program and a lot of that detail around questions around specific projects um, to a public works committee for a further discussion. And the work of the nature of this work is that if it were to move forward at final budget, there is time in the year to complete work uh, project work in 2022. Um, there is some concern and, and question around the quality of the roads yeah. that this would be going on, uh, some uncertainty around what kind of application this is. I think council needs to know all those details to make a good decision. Uh, it doesn't preclude it from not coming forward in 2022, but I think you'll be making a, a more informed decision with that discussion and, and we can make that a focus point of Public Works Committee over the next couple of meetings. Uh, I think it dovetails in some of the other uh, issues around uh, dust suppression as well. And, and we can put that together in a full program for you for review. Mm, thank you for that. Any comments on this and the proposed action by administration? Councillor Vandenberg? Um, I support <clears throat> the action by administration. Um, I support the program uh, because it is highly visible and it is um, looking forward to what we've already started, and that is um, uh, being a little bit more analytic uh, with our roads yes. and the information that we gathered coming back. And having that in front of us allows us then to look at these type of opportunities, uh, the, the linking the last mile or whatever sort of the program is called. Um, but before I would want to make the full decision, uh, having more relative information around it, um, I think is uh, appropriate from in my mind. Councillor Lewis. Thank you very much. Uh, having advocated for this program for four years and now I'm going on to my fifth year, um, we've had many opportunities to talk about this program in public works and in budget last year, um, understanding that there's still a program that needs to be developed to, to fix these roads uh, kind of once and for all, if you will. 
Um, I would definitely support this being put in the budget now, having more information come back to public works and us making, making the right decisions on, on roads and what product uh, to put on these roads. Um, if efficiency is what we need to look for. I know, uh, for example, Deer Crossing, there's, there's road work that needs to be done um, in the spring that Public Works is committed to and what a perfect opportunity to do that road at the same time. Um, I would definitely support this being included in budget. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Just hang on, Council Member, see if we have anybody else. Go ahead. Uh, just one. I mean, having the relevant information come, coming back should also include uh, the likelihood of life. Yeah. Um, so, for example, <clears throat> we did a pilot on 250. We did four different test strips. Uh, the, uh, the oil based one, MG30, is still holding up, but it is feathering on the outside of it. And so instead of us just watching that crack further and further and further, this should be a discussion on in three years time, we're probably going to have to redo the outer edges or the middle or the, or the sides or whatever to enhance, to continue the performance of this uh, expenditure. So I think that that needs to be a part of this uh, discussion as well and uh, go back to 250 before we lose it all. And uh, there's, one, there's a test strip in Larry's area as well and, and Ray's, before we lose it all, what should we be doing now to maintain it? Thank you. Um, I'm going to be supporting the getting more information and I appreciate Councillor Lewis's um, uh, discussion about her advocacy for so many years. Um, what she won't know is that I advocated for six years to try and get money put into our rural road initiative. And it took a lot of time, but we did it right. It wasn't money thrown in without a plan. It was money that then uh, was supported by all of council and moved forward. So sometimes um, the right work takes a little bit of time. And because we are managing our taxpayer dollars, I think that getting this information and understanding what might be the first best road to use this on will help us create uh, confidence, not only in our, our residents, but in the quality of road we present. So I, I would be supporting uh, the getting more information. I would be wanting um, an absolute more fulsome discussion to put those ideas um, on the table for administration at our next public works discussion so that we do not lose this in the in the work that we do. And I see that I am getting a couple of notes down. Uh, so please let's, I'll just talk to the chair sitting next to me, Councillor Lewis. We need to have that and we need to have a fairly long period of time for that as well. Any further comments on that? Go ahead. Councillor Scobie. I guess, yeah, I would make the comment. We need to take the time and look at these roads. We've had our rural road uh, uh, condition report done. Um, that's changed over the last couple of years uh, from a real wet year to a real dry year. Yeah. Uh, the conditions really improved, but I think we need to pick what roads they're looking at and go and, and do a more thorough test on them uh, in the summertime. Uh, so that we don't end up with the piece with the piece that I'm after to get done up on Range Road 15 was paved and fell apart because of uh, it not oh, being road fit uh, road conditions to cover. So we need to take and look at the specific pieces of road and do a more extensive test than just what we did with our rural road uh, evaluations. Yeah. Thank you. So I am going to call the question on councillors who would like the last link program to move into the 2022 interim budget. That means at this time, you can vote yes right now. Councillors Lewis, Smith, Vandenberg and Wanchuk. So it will move up. Opposed? Well, just might as well do that. Uh, Scobie, DeBlanco, and uh, Belazer. Will we then, Mr. Coleman, look at how we decide which road um, through public works? 
Was that become an operational recommendation to council? Um, to pass really at this point, if it's going above the line, uh, then we can budget the dollar amount. Yep. That amount is for the projects that were identified. Okay. Now council may wish to just secure the funding and okay. have more discussion around okay. the road piece at public works committee, but that's a decision you, you can make now. Okay. Um, so it, the money has been secured. Um, going to ask, um, we what I what I hear is the next decision point is go ahead with the um, plan as presented in the budget or secure the money and look at more information to decide how to move forward between now and final budget. So I'm going to ask the question on um, moving forward uh, and asking for more information uh, between now and final budget. All in favor? Oh yes, you may. Uh, just to clarify, uh, public the recommendation shows that there's three, or that it's broken down into one, two, and three years. Can you maybe explain how those not like how it was prioritized before we decide, please? The 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 years, not the projects. So how were the years decided or identified? Okay. Mr. Coleman, uh, that uh, we may need some comment from uh, Public Works. Public Works uh, from uh, Mr. Okay. Merglod and and Mr. Broadbent. Okay, uh, Mr. S Councilor Smith. Looks like we have it out over three years, and you did secure the money. I would say it looks like we have over four, and plus four million dollars for this year. Like this is a program I'd like to see us put into place and finish over a period of time. <laughs> is there any way we can uh, move it out one year? Uh, as well in the discussions so we're not anti uh, securing okay that's a good question and i would suggest that if we are going to we've secured money if we're going to look at more information that could be part of the more information between now and final budget as well as how did those how did they break them down could be more information i guess what i'm hearing from our ma our county manager is we've secured the money it's really no hurry to say yes let's do it all it might be looking at spreading it out over one more year we might hear from public works between now and final budget that we're going to change we've looked at the roads and we're going to change who's in one year one year two year three those are the types of things that could be coming forward Okay, so I will call the question on receiving, um, sorry, asking for more um, information prior to deciding on the, the roads. No, the funding's been secured, Be the roads that will be done. Is that correct? As it sits now, the discussion, the way I understand it, is the $242,471 is going to be in the interim budget. Correct. Uh, council's now deciding whether you're going forward with those three projects that are identified for that money or, or whether you want to have further information about looking at those projects right. and are those the right three projects through the public works yeah. process. And or we could spread over four years as that's another option. Uh, so you could add more projects yep. or looking to reduce the 242,000 yep. to okay. spread the project over. So lots of lots of options for discussion. Councilor Lewis. Can I suggest that administration come back after lunch with this information, maybe from Public Works, on how how those were just, uh, decided on and what the numbers would be if it was stretched over five years or four years instead of three? So before I, we decide, I think we have. I, I mean, I'm, was it a motion or just a suggestion on a vote? I don't know where we are with process, Mr. Coleman. Yeah, so far you've just been doing straw votes. So. Straw votes. Yep. Yeah. So before we take Councillor Lewis's straw vote. How many people want to just get the more information, look at lots of options going forward? We can provide to administration those op the, the information we need before we decide in final budget how we want to spend the money that we've set aside. So how many people would like to do that? I'm sorry, I'm so confused. So <clears throat> the money, Councillor Lewis, has been set aside. We have money now for final link. Yeah. What, what had happened is now council had lots of questions about are those the right three roads? Right. Do we wanna look at the quality of the roads? So what we've done is said, council wants more information between now and final budget on the roads that were in the first year to determine, are they the right roads? Should we be working on them? Is there an opportunity to spread it out over four years perhaps? Like So just more discussion, the money is secured. We just want more information on, are those the roads? Okay. 
So is that clear now to administration? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. And how has that changed our budget or our budgeting amount or has it? Yes, um, so with that change, when we, at the start of budget deliberations, we are at 1.76% for a tax dollar budget increase. So that would bring it up to 2.28%. Okay, thoughts, Council? Councillor Vandenberg? Well, I think we should focus on that percentage, not as a line item increase, but at the end, we should have this conversation. And then have a look at it. So, well, then we should be focused on the impact. Okay. <clears throat> line item. Um, and, and we're not, the budget, the 2.28% is a overall budget increase that council has looked at the things in the budget and we've decided those are the things we want to have in there. So that would be the budget increase that we would be announcing at interim budget. We are finishing interim budget. If something changes between now and final budget, that number can change um, uh, because council can have it change. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Coleman? Well, typically once we get interim budget yep. approval, then our capital program kicks into play. Okay. So then you'd have to make other changes either through funding source capital. or okay. um, in operating uh, changes. Okay, um, any questions on that? Uh, microphone, Councillor Smith. Again, I'd like to see the budget below 2%, one and change. And if we're looking at the last link, if you did it over four years, you could probably do 150,000 a year and drop 80, 90,000 and maybe get below that 1%, but I can't support anything over 2% right now but I do support the last link. So I really hope in our conversations, we talk about the four year stretch out to keep this below 2%. Um, I have Mr. Coleman. Uh, my suggestion would be then if uh, council wants to keep it below 2%, you have a couple options here. You can reduce that 242,000 to a arbitrary amount. And then we work the program within that oh. budget amount. So you could then in essence, extend it over four or five, six years. The other option is to remove something from the budget, uh, allow administration to come back with something that we would uh, see as less of a priority than this uh, piece of work. While we're taking Councillor Vandenberg's question, what would be the amount to keep us at under 2% or below? Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg. So I'm going to follow a suggestion that uh, Councillor Scobie uh, made a little bit earlier in the beginning of all this, and that is um, to take a look at our um, graveling operations and look at how it affects our quality and our budget uh, on a, on a four-year program versus a three-year program. Um, and I'm suggesting that because of the, um, the comments around the table um, with how well our roads are, and particularly uh, those of us that, uh, or all of us that uh, did our campaign, we drove every road, we saw what was out there. And I thought Councillor Scobie's suggestion that, you know, do we need to apply some of this gravel every three years, regardless if it needs it or not, maybe <coughs> we should be looking at, let's have a chat around a four-year program, um, which, is, uh, which is something that we haven't done. So if I could, uh, we'll answer Councillor Vandenberg's question first. What We did make a decrease in the graveling program this year. If Ms. Klamosko can tell us what is the decrease in the graveling program amount for 2022. So we had made a decrease of 10% uh, for, for the graveling program in the 2022 budget. So that I don't have the dollar yep. value um, at hand at this moment, but we did cut it by 10% for 2022 and also part of road operations operational plan, there was that commitment made that they would look at looking at the program to see if there's opportunity to move to a different cycle um, and extending that period of time for the graveling program. So that was something within the operational plan as well. Okay, so there's already a 10% decrease in the graveling program for 2022. Uh, Ms. Weiss, do you have the number for the program if it were to be 2% or below? I do, yes, Madam Mayor. So if we wanted to stay at 2% tax increase, the last link program would need to be at $115,000. 115? 115. Thank you. Councillor Vandenberg? Um, I heard from Councillor Smith on his opinion uh, for the tax. Um, I myself am not bothered by the 2.28. 
Um, I think that the 0.28 is relatively insignificant considering uh, what we've accomplished the last couple of years. Um, and I think that some, I would venture that the, if I think like uh, other taxpayers, um, I expect that we need to um, bring our program back up at some point. We did a good job managing the pandemic. And, uh, but a 0% increase means that uh, there are some costs. And uh, the fact is that uh, um, inflation uh, has, has a, a say in all this. So 0.28%, 2.28% does not make me afraid at all. Thank you. Um, I support um, Councillor Smith's uh, 2%. I think $115,000 in the last link program, which does not benefit all of county residents, not like the graveling program would, allows us to perhaps work on one road, perhaps two roads, depending on it. So it moves the program ahead and it keeps us at what I believe would be a reasonable tax increase. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to put the taxes up. I, I, I'm, you know, I voted against this uh, coming forward without more information again, because it is not an initiative that follows any of our other policies and or allows uh, or benefits all of our residents in our in our municipality. But I will compromise to the 2% and $115,000, uh, but will not am not willing to move farther on that. Thank you. And the floor is open for any other debate. Well, I'll jump in. Councillor Vandenberg. So yeah, it's important that uh, we look at this in terms of fairness, but um, the last link program is not entirely to the east. It is uh, it's balanced to the east, uh, but there's a lot of representation out that way too. So I still believe that 2.28% um, is not detrimental. I don't know why we need to get stuck on two. I guess, why do we got to get stuck on 2.28? Um, when we can do what appears to be on this last link program, that are, those are obvious things that our taxpayers are seeing. Uh, and I'm willing to, after uh, discussion in more detail, uh, reduce it. Uh, but not for the sake of, of hitting 2%. I would rather have the information in front of me before I agree to it. And I, I'm afraid that this is just knee jerking and uh, I'm not in favor of it. Any further comments? Councillor Lewis. Thank you. Uh, hearing Mr. Coleman say that administration could go back and find efficiencies and possibly remove something within their budget that they might not be as a higher priority, I would be in favor of to see this full program come forward. Um, like Councillor Vandenberg said, this is this is countywide. These roads are in front of us for a reason. Um, and we're creating a policy now to stop this list from growing. Um, so this is um, this is a way to end problems on on these roads uh, countywide. Thank you. Councillor Smith, microphone, please. Well, we spent the last few days going through, and if something could have been cut, I, I think we probably would have done that. By now, we're talking administration going back and taking something out. There's nothing in here that is a nice to have. I think we, over the years, took a lot of stuff out of the budget to, to get where we are today. This, this budget here is uh, remaking and, I guess, reinvesting in some of the things that we haven't done. The last link, I agree with it, but there is something... When you look at other people's tax increases around the area, some of them are over two, some of them are under. I still think people find their taxes that they're paying important. And I would like to see a 1.99 to tell you the truth, just so you don't <laughs> say the number two, but I couldn't go any higher than two. I can live with, the, with that in the first year. And again, everything, just to your comment, everything that we've talked about over the last few days there's nothing in here that's uh, that we can take out because we don't really need it or there's not a risk that has to be addressed. So again, 1.99%, get going on this last link. It doesn't need to all be done in the first year. Um, I had a project taken off the books because we needed to find the 400 grand. I know NISCU had some roads taken off because there's money there. So in a budget where everybody gets a little bit, I think the last link program is a major win getting it in. 
And I think spreading it out much the same as we did with the breathing apparatus just gives yeah. us a little bit of a, a leeway uh, in this program. Again, could be done in four or five years. Ray, you said you had a road on there. Maybe if there's success, stuff gets added over the years and it becomes not a four-year, but an eight-year program where we identify other last link type of things. So for me, I'd like to see a 199. I can live with 2%. I like the last link in. I like spreading it over um, a couple more years, which we've done. So that's where I'd be going today. All right. Uh, no other hands, but Councillor Vandenberg, go ahead. This is turning into optics. This is optics versus actual services and you're hung up on a percentage. I'm looking at it as a whole in terms of the, surface, the services we're providing. Um, how that ends up is, it's wrong for us to say, let's plug it into, now let's reduce it down to 1.99. We gotta look at the services that we're providing. And to me, that justifies um, the 2.28. So I'm not sure why we're, this is optics. Uh, I'm not worried about how it looks. I'm worried about, I'm interested in getting the services that we talk about providing. So just thank you. And just a reminder to council that when we did look at the road program, we did not spend any time discussing, discussing the last link. So this really is our first opportunity to discuss it and have that opportunity because it was below the line. So um, we need to understand and have that opportunity and listen to everyone's uh, perspective as we move forward. Councillor Scobie. Okay, I would support putting this in, but I also uh, want to stay at that 2%. I don't look at this as a necessity uh, program. This is a nice to have program. And for a few people in the county, it's not countywide, it's uh, East End County, and it's a nice to have. And uh, I think this is enough. We can spread it over enough years that we'll get it done eventually, but uh, it doesn't have to be all in two or three years. Thank you, Councillor Scobie. And again, I agree with it. And it is, I will just say it is countywide. I have two roads on the list that are actually uh, in Division 5. Um, and again, I know that those roads probably need significant upgrading before we put anything on top of it if we want it to last more than three years. Um, and because otherwise it's not uh, good money. Again, $115,000 is a good start. Um, if we have good success, then we go ahead and we continue to invest. Uh, like Councillor Scobie, I, I also believe it's a nice to have. Um, and it is um, a bit of a cleanup, as we heard from Councillor um, Lewis as well. And it is a way forward that compromises the desire to get this done that we're hearing from our council and trying to keep a reasonable tax increase. So this is a compromise that was put on the table. And I actually think uh, it's a good compromise. It allows everybody to move forward with, I think, um, feeling like they're doing the best for the residents and best for um, the county as well. And we are open for any further comments, debate. I'll hop in again. Once again, I do not see why we're stuck on we have an opportunity, it's been well thought out. It's over four years, um, three years, pardon me. And it, it, it's, it shows where we're putting our money. These roads have passed us already a certain set of criteria. It's okay to double check that, um, but it's, it's, it's highly visible. It's what our taxpayers can see. It is for the benefit of the county, not East versus West. And I don't see why we need to compromise what the, the work that's already gone into it. I'm still at the 2.2 is 2.8. Councillor Lewis. Thank you. I would, I would actually support the full 200 and, um, sorry, it was 242, thank you. Um, and have these robust conversations in public works. And if we, at final budget, adjust the numbers there, and the program and the length of time, I think that's probably the most appropriate place to do it. But if we if we get this in 
and we tell our residents, this is what our plan is. We're looking for more information and um, the best for everyone. I think that would probably be the best and most appropriate thing for our taxpayers. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, just uh, going back to Mr. Coleman. So we have a suggestion at 115. I would assume we will just discuss that and see where we go. Is that correct? Or where, where are we now? Uh, point of order, just, we've already yep. agreed to 242. So that's the number that needs to go in there. And if there's any further uh, compromises and further discussions, then it can come down. So I just want to remind okay. that that's the number that goes in there, not the 115. Mr. Coleman. Uh, Madam Chair, that number is determined by the majority position of council. Um, so right now you've been using... We're still discussing. You're discussing. You've been using straw votes to have that discussion. Uh, this is a way for you to see the impact of taxation. This afternoon, this item is on the agenda for a formal vote, at which time someone will need to put a motion on the floor and there will need to be a vote either I'm supporting sorry, it point of order or, again, we've or, had uh, a vote. We've had a vote. I raised my hand. It was 4-3. The, the, I need clarity because what was that right. vote all about? Then? It, it is a, it was a, it was a straw poll to see how people feel. It's a vote. I don't, there was no whatever. formal was motion on the floor. Vote. Yes, it was mm, to support no. the 240 odd dollars. I just yeah. going to, Madam Chair, there, all of a sudden that's now changing. Like that, that's not right. Yeah. Madam Chair, there was no motion put forward by a right. member of council. We've been using a straw vote process here. We do this every year in budget. We have for the last four years, this is no different this year and this afternoon there will be an official vote on this this has been the same process yes. four years in a row yep. i think it's time we all understand that yep. fine so we are in discussion we let's not confuse it anymore then because i'm confused and i'm getting heck over here and i shouldn't just, be just i'm sticking point, up for what i understand just yep point of order we're just this is budget discussions have all been discussions until we vote on the final interim budget discussion. So when we were talking about the fire trucks, when we were talking about the fence, we look around the table and people are nodding or not nodding. Those weren't votes. This was a little bit more formal because it was a longer discussion, but it was not, there was no motion on the floor, just like there's no motion on the floor for Councillor uh, uh, Smith's 2%. We didn't vote on that. We haven't. I was. We were going through discussion. We were still discussing we it. We voted on two forty-two. We we had a straw poll on two forty-two. There was so no you motion. Call it. Thank you. So, any more comments on a change um, to last link that would uh, allow the program to go forward while keeping the budget increase at two percent? Uh, Councillor Smith. Again, even talking about adding the last link on the last day, the last moment to the budget, I think is a win for the program. We've been kicking around for a little bit. So we may or may not decide on dollars that go in it today. I, I don't support the 242 as a, a quarter million dollars added on at the end of the day. However, I can support getting started on it much the same as we're getting started on many projects. To, to go forward and I'll just appeal to council members. We put a little bit on everything and some of you might do this in your home as well, where you have a certain amount of bills that need to be paid. If you can't get to all of them, then what you do is what's the best, finding what priority that are there. This is a priority program. Many of us take complaints on blocking that up. I probably have three or four of them. So I'll be trying to, this afternoon, I'll be supporting the 2% tax increase um, with the 150-ish uh, for the last link program. I think it'd be something to get it started. And, I, and I'm pretty sure it's going to change because we got to change our base. Mm -hmm. There could be roads. Ray, you had already talked about uh, number 15. Maybe that's something that could come in on that which isn't on it right now. And again, it could cost a lot more than the 580,000 that we have, and it could run for 10 years to, to clean up stuff. God help us if we continue to do anything like that. But again, 2%, I'm a taxpayer too, as, as are you guys. And there's psychological things that people look at. 1% raise, 2% raise, 3%. If you can keep it at 299, it beats three. If you can keep it at 199, it beats two. 
Uh, that's why when you walk into a grocery store, it's a dollar ninety nine, not two bucks. <laughs> anyway, I hope we I hope we can find the consensus to move forward with it later today. So thank you very much. And um, on our agenda, we are just reviewing the summary of 2021 final to 2022 interim. It will be in the afternoon that we approve the final budget. Any other comments on the changes on here? Seeing none, I will recess us or is there anything, Mr. Coleman, stopping us from doing approval of fees and charges and utilities fees and charges? Uh, absolutely nothing, Madam Chair. Council, would you be willing to move to there? Um, it is has nothing to do with what we're looking at right now because all the fees and charges have been reviewed by uh, Council and questions asked. So tab nine. So going to the first uh, approval of bylaw fees and charges, which excludes utilities, the one addition or change we made from what council saw earlier in our deliberations was based on the comment that around the cancellation, we thought it would be a good thing to add into the fees and charges just, just to be clear that cancellations within certain periods of time relates to not a return of your, your fee. So we, we've added that change into the fees and charges. So that is the only change from what council reviewed throughout all of the department presentations. Okay, thank you for that. And thank you for uh, hearing that and making that change. So the first page uh, behind tab nine is the fees and charges. And um, we are, it is a bylaw, so we would be looking for three, is that correct? Three readings. Councillor Smith? Councillor Smith will move uh, first reading on fees and charges bylaw for 2022. Any comments, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Going to second reading, Councillor Belazer, comments, questions, all in favor? Third reading in the same day, Councillor Wanchuk, thank you, all in favor? And third reading, Councillor Lewis, all in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. Where to now, utilities by law? That is correct. And that's behind the blue page in tab nine. So there were some corrections uh, made to the fees and charges that were brought to light when we discussed this item with utilities. So we have um, the changes highlighted in red. And these we had talked about, correct? Yeah. There are no new changes for it from administration. Ms. Weiss? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So when administration had an opportunity to review the, the utilities department had a motion, sorry, not a motion, my apologies. The wastewater commission is actually approving their fee schedule tomorrow, I believe. Right. So what Mr. Downey had done was actually included those new fees as per the recommendation that'll be going forward tomorrow. So they have updated the overstrength surcharges based on that new information. Okay. So that is on page five, five of seven. seven. Um, and these changes are only a flow through from the wastewater commission, correct? That is my understanding, yes. Okay. And number 12 says that. Surcharges are based on the Alberta Capital Region Wastewater Commission surcharge rates. Any further questions or any questions on fees and charges for utilities? I am seeing none. Again, this is a bylaw, so we will need three readings. Looking for someone to move first reading. Councillor Lewis, thank you very much. 
Any further comments or questions? Question. Yep. What if they don't end up being able to establish their integrated system? Like Ms. Weiss, through the chair, yes. That ultimately, if we don't update it at this time and they approve it, then we have to come back and approve it in early January. Or if they change their recommendation tomorrow when they do the approval, then we'd have to come back and change them. So otherwise, there could be a possible change either way. Mr. Coleman? Madam Chair, members of council, we'd have to bring the bylaw back for an right. amendment. Rescind yeah. the one we've approved and then do a one for third reading. That's correct. So no harm, no harm. Correct. Yep, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Good question. All in favor of first reading? Second reading, Councillor Scobie. Comments or questions, all in favor? Third reading the same day. Councillor Smith, all in favor? And third reading. Councillor Belazer, all in favor? That is passed. With that, I will recess until one o'clock, um, at which time we will be approving our 2022 interim budget. Thank you. Thank you.